Hi, I'm Kate. I'm a bookseller at Porter Square Books. Happy Independent Bookstore Day. We have a tradition at Porter Square. We have so many incredible bakers on staff that every year we do a great bookseller bake-off on Independent Bookstore Day. And usually um, we have uh, our customers from our community come in and sample bakes by five or six bakers on staff and vote on whose bake is the best. And unfortunately this year, we're unable to do that. Hopefully next year, fingers crossed, we'll be back. But instead, I am going to bake a Porter Square Books cake for our bookseller bake off and invite you to join me in the process. <laughs> so I'm gonna make a chocolate cake. Um, it's going to have almond cream and raspberry jam inside. And I'm going to try to make it look like a stack of books. Um, every year I like to try something different. Um, I like never get to, you know, in my day-to-day -day life make elaborate cakes. So I've, I've tried a different technique every year. Um, the first year I made a marzipan bear. The second year I did some like chocolate work. Um, and this year it's going to be fondant and shake cakes. So at least a book is a rectangle. It shouldn't be too hard. We'll see. Uh, but let's, let's start baking. I have my 9 by 13 pan all oiled up. It's actually paper. I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees, and um, here we go. So we have creamed our butter and sugar together here. Um, the next step is to add the eggs. I should say uh, we usually choose recipes from cookbooks that we like. Um, this year I made up this cake, so it's kind of an amalgam of recipes that I found online. But in the past I've won the Bake Off with recipes from Joanne Chang's Flour 2, which I love, and um, Christina Tosi's uh, Milk Bar All About Cakes. And in All About Cakes, Christina says that her secret to fluffy cakes is beating the eggs for two minutes between the addition of each egg. So I'm going to do that. Um, it works really well. It is a great little secret. tells me that to make a professional cake maker grade chocolate ganache, I need a ratio of three to one on dark chocolate and heavy whipping cream, um, which meant that I had to do some pretty serious math um, because it's by weight. And I figured that I have 34.5 ounces of chocolate chips here. And then I needed 11.5 ounces of heavy whipping cream, and I converted that into cups, and it comes out to about one and a third cups. So hopefully this works. Hey, Mom. Can you come hold this phone? to the rescue. <laughs> We're gonna fill the cake with a raspberry jam that we're gonna make. 
um, as well as an almond cream and a crunchy almond praline. Oh, to be Prince Caspian, a float upon the way. Oh, to be Prince Caspian, a float upon the way. on top of each other. <laughs> Wish me luck! I bonded. <laughs> I am so nervous about this. I've never done it. And everything I read is like, make sure your ganache is perfectly smooth because the fondant shows all imperfections in your cake. And my cake has many imperfections. <laughs> um, I blame the tools. Like every website I read was like, all right, get your ganache scraper out. And I'm like, well, I have a knife. <laughs> um, so this could be a really wonky looking book cake might look a little more like nailed it than Great British Bake Off, but uh, yeah, fondant time, I'm excited. <laughs> so it's easy to use. It has no instructions. So I don't really know how to, I don't know how to make it like workable. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that of all the advice that baking sites had, none of them said don't get the chocolate ganache on the white fondant of the book's pages. Uh, in real life, I get my books dirty all the time, so really this is just a more realistic look. <laughs>
last. <laughs> All of that cutting and measuring work. Beautiful.